Our fifth class is devoted to the topic Initial Phase of Regime Transformation and Consolidation in New Independent States and Territories with Incomplete Sovereign Status. To discuss the regime consolidation in uh, those territories uh, and uh, link of regime uh, consolidation to uh, state building projects uh, ongoing in the in the areas it's important to uh, take into consideration variables of regime dynamics initial phase of regime transformation or first transit phase uh, took from several months to several years in various cases uh, this could be attributed to desynchronization of political processes uh, that became very, very visible after the collapse of Soviet Union. The pace of transit depended to a great extent on two variables. Experience accumulation of actual or simulated state building and threats to inherited segment stateness. Both factors were quite important. Uh, the first uh, factor, experience accumulation, uh, of course was uh, linked to a great extent with the uh, mm, thickness and uh, intensity of uh, historical traditions of uh, various uh, state building projects. Uh, the second uh, uh, variable, threat to inherited uh, segment stateness, uh, was related more to specific environmental situations for state building projects in each of the 23 cases that we have been discussing at the, at the, at the previous lectures, at the previous classes. Combination of the two variables may explain to quite a great extent composition of the group of the 23 cases of successful or abortive state building. Of course, there were also other aspects uh, quite uh, important for, uh, for transits and transformations. Uh, first of all, we have to uh, consider destinations of uh, individual tr transits. Uh, it would be uh, a gross uh, exaggeration to say that uh, in all the 23 cases we are dealing with the so-called democratic transit. Democratic transit is a fairly general uh, category, fairly abstract uh, category, um, having a clear uh, uh, normative tinge uh, uh, related to the concept of uh, waves of democratization and democratization as a global process. Of course, in uh, specific uh, countries, in specific regions, uh, democratization uh, paradigm uh, could not uh, explain and would not explain the uh, immediate uh, interests of political actors and uh, actual developments. Uh, from this point of view, it's quite important to acknowledge uh, that um, destinations of transit uh, should not be uh, should not be judged or evaluated uh, normatively. Uh, destinations of transit uh, process uh, or ideal destinations of transit processes, destinations that were <coughs> existing in the head in the heads of uh, political actors, uh, the destinations that were conceptualized uh, by major uh, agencies uh, of, uh, of change. Uh, even uh, those uh, destinations uh, could only to a limited extent uh, be um, interpreted uh, only in terms of uh, democracy or democratization. Uh, in fact, uh, destinations of individual transits uh, and uh, the uh, aims of uh, uh, state-building projects um, were to a great extent dependent on political agendas 
of uh, new polities claiming sovereignty. And uh, those uh, issues uh, that uh, composed uh, agendas uh, were uh, fairly uh, specific uh, in each case. Uh, yeah, despite uh, similarities between uh, a number of uh, number of cases, um, we still can um, uh, say that uh, uh, not one single uh, uh, single case of uh, of uh, transit, not one single case of uh, uh, state building project um, coincided uh, with uh, each other. Uh, and uh, it's uh, rather difficult to um, develop uh, general uh, types uh, of, uh, of or patterns of uh, state building. Although, of course, uh, all the 23 cases could be grouped together into, uh, into could be split into specific groups, um, specific uh, classes, uh, using uh, various um, uh, various. Uh, uh, criteria uh, for uh, classification. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the reasons for uh, such variety of uh, transits and such variety of the, of the, the uh, conceptual uh, maps of destinations of uh, those transits, um, of course, uh, um, we have to take into consideration, as I mentioned, uh, political agendas. Um, those political agendas, by the way, were changing, uh, they were quite flexible, uh, but uh, still, with all their flexibility, uh, they were definitely priority um, issues uh, in those agendas that uh, remained there in the agenda uh, during the whole initial phase of transit, initial stage of transit. Um, uh, probably the uh, the the uh, relative priority of uh, issues could change, but uh, they remain there. And uh, if we uh, try to single out uh, issues that were present practically in all the uh, political agendas of uh, the uh, of 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 the post-Soviet um, uh, transits and post-Soviet uh, um, state-building projects. Uh, we would see that uh, high in these uh, in these agendas were the issues of national identity search, transfer of power, uh, sovereignty level, and definitely in uh, all cases and in some very high stood an issue of the very survival of new polities. Particularly, uh, this issue of the very survival of new polities is typical of the eight exceptional cases that. Uh, uh, exceptional cases that um, we have uh, uh, for state building projects in the areas outside former Union republics. As for democracy uh, agendas, um, of course, they were uh, issues of democracy. Uh, we are present. Uh, in uh, uh, all the political agendas of uh, post-Soviet um, uh, states, uh, but uh, uh, they stood fairly high only in a number of them. Uh, and uh, even then, uh, they, they were relatively high there. Uh, uh, in uh, some cases, uh, the issues of uh, uh, democracy and, uh, and uh, democratic institution building or issues of political participation of citizenry uh, were uh, not that significant as the issues which I mentioned earlier. Uh, national identity search, survival, governability, and transfer of power. Uh, democracy and uh, political participation of citizenry and accountability of authorities, by the way, another very important aspect of uh, democratic agenda, um, came second only in uh, in uh, some agendas, while in number of cases uh, they were actually insignificant. Insignificant. Uh, the uh, whole idea of accountability of authority was uh, foreign for most uh, polities of uh, Central Asia, for example. 
uh, they were quite uh, ambiguous uh, and uh, not so significant uh, in uh, the case of uh, Transcaucasian uh, republics. Uh, they even in the area of uh, Baltic Cynic, uh, in the Baltic Cynic area, uh, their interpretation was uh, fairly fairly ambiguous uh, and not so prominent as it should be uh, should have been uh, taking into consideration general trends of global development uh, political participation was uh, probably uh, much more prominent in most of the agendas but uh, even then uh, it was uh, not so much um, uh, uh, individual political participation but rather collective political participation uh, very often linked uh, to the uh, primary issue of uh, national identity search. Uh, this is true, uh, for example, even of uh, the uh, polities uh, that are claimed to be most advanced in terms of developing democratic agendas. If we take, for example, uh, polities of uh, Baltic uh, states, uh, in all Baltic states, uh, uh, there existed uh, uh, democratic agenda, uh, <clears throat> although expressed in a very contradictory manner. Uh, but even there, even there uh, political participation was seen uh, very clearly under uh, <clears throat> under the. Uh, guise of and in, in, in the perspective of, of um, uh, collective identity search. Uh, this was a reason why, for example, the whole issue of exclusion uh, of uh, significant parts of citizenry emerged, uh, because uh, political participation was seen as collective participation and as directly linked to, to uh, national identity search. <clears throat> Very often, political participation of citizens and accountability um, of authorities um, uh, came at odds with governability and transfer of power. This is particularly true uh, in case of Transcaucasian republics, for example. But uh, the same contradictions uh, actually appeared everywhere, uh, everywhere, probably expressed to a lesser extent. Uh, configuration of individual agendas may account to further uh, divergence of state-building trajectories from ideal type patterns of democratizations that we know from uh, general uh, uh, transitological uh, studies and uh, consolidological uh, literature. So it wasn't uh, a surprise that uh, the uh, post-Soviet experience at a fairly early stage uh, demonstrated uh, very significant deviations from normative uh, patterns of uh, democratic transit. Uh, to better understand uh, why uh, those deviations uh, have taken place and what is the nat nature of those deviations, how those deviations could be explained, uh, we have to um, take into consideration criteria for regime dynamics. Uh, of course, there were just a wide uh, variety of uh, reasons and causes that, um, that um, determined regime dynamics. Uh, but still, with uh, all uh, um, those causes, it were uh, formal um, institutional uh, criteria uh, that make it possible to compare uh, situations on the one hand, and uh, secondly, which uh, actually uh, allow to maintain uh, a significant uh, degree of uh, um, governability um, uh, at the process of uh, uh, regime development. Uh, so um, those formal criteria are usually related to constitutional uh, frameworks. Um, if we take into consideration and um, uh, try to uh, analyze uh, what uh, are those uh, constitutional frameworks, uh, we could uh, divide them into uh, uh, several groups. 
uh, for uh, some regimes uh, uh, for, for the initial stage of uh, their consolidation. It was important to maintain and use uh, Soviet constitution provisions, Soviet constitutional provisions. Um, it's, uh, it's quite evident why, uh, because um, most, uh, most of new independent states were resting upon uh, uh, Union Republics of uh, Soviet Union and they claimed their, um, their uh, legal uh, foundation on the uh, rights of successor states to uh, Union Republics. Uh, so for them, uh, using of uh, Soviet constitution uh, was uh, absolutely vital and natural. But uh, this is also true um, for some of the uh, eight uh, of, uh, the, um, of uh, the exceptional um, uh, cases where uh, state building processes developed outside a Union Republic uh, framework. Uh, uh, to give you an example, this is particularly true, for example, of uh, Abkhazian developments. In Abkhazia, they were quite keen uh, in, uh, in um, uh, uh, stressing the uh, importance of uh, traditions dating back to Soviet period, which is quite natural because uh, for Abkhazia, uh, existence of uh, Abkhazia within Soviet Union, uh, outside uh, Georgia, not a very long period, but still quite important period for uh, Abkhazians, was a very important precedent. Uh, and uh, the claims they were making that uh, their inclusion into uh, Georgia uh, was uh, done artificially and forcefully, uh, also holds water uh, uh, and uh, doesn't contradict um, possibilities to use uh, Soviet legal and constitutional tradition to justify their cause. Uh, another constitutional frameworks uh, that were used were alternative or new constitutions. Uh, in fact, in practically in all the cases, uh, regimes uh, had to strengthen uh, themselves, had to consolidate themselves using um, alternative or new uh, constitutions. Uh, in some cases, uh, those new constitutions were uh, created fairly quickly. In some cases, uh, it took uh, a period of time before a regime uh, could actually uh, launch such a project and utilize such a framework. Uh, uh, and uh, this period uh, this uh, lagging behind in uh, developing of a uh, new constitution also characterizes quite uh, quite a lot uh, dynamics uh, of uh, uh, respective regimes. Uh, uh, the third uh, constitutional framework uh, that uh, we have uh, to take into consideration uh, was a possibility of no constitution or no modern constitution, uh, to, be, to be more precise, although this is, of course, a kind of uh, uh, a, a, a contradictory uh, statement, uh, because all constitutions, of course, are by definition modern. Uh, uh, what, what I, when I say no constitution, that means uh, that uh, in some uh, cases, at least in one uh, case, definitely, uh, there was an attempt to uh, uh, resort to uh, turn to um, unmodern uh, legal and uh, 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 political uh, base for for uh, creating an independent polity, and this is the case of Chechnya, of course, where uh, mm, uh, 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 where. Uh, from the very beginning, there was a, a, a clear uh, a challenge uh, to uh, Soviet constitution. Uh, the um, uh, actual creation of uh, Republic of Echkeria was linked to um, existence um, of uh, um, 
a social uh, network uh, structure in the form of uh, uh, confederation of Chechenian, uh, Chechenian people um, or other tribes uh, that um, was uh, already in Soviet period an alternative power base uh, in, that, uh, in that area. And uh, the further um, uh, polit polity building uh, was uh, based uh, on that structure. Uh, but uh, even when uh, attempts were made to uh, establish um, or simulate uh, state structure uh, and to uh, demand its international recognition, um, even in, in, at, the, at the later period, uh, uh, this was done uh, in um, clear denial both of Soviet constitution or Western constitutional tradition. Uh, at some stage, Echkerian uh, uh, state, so-called Echkerian state, uh, had to resort, uh, for example, to Sharia, uh, uh, legal base for uh, creating its uh, structure and the, 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 the very state they were claiming to establish, uh, they called an uh, Islamic state and uh, there, there was uh, no clearly defined constitutional uh, framework, but rather a very specific uh, tradition, legal tradition, uh, they were uh, uh, looking for. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, we have here three uh, actual ideal uh, types of constitutional frameworks. Of course, in, in uh, actual practice, in uh, actual running of the business, uh, uh, we cannot find any single case where one specific uh, constitutional framework uh, would be uh, would be employed, um, with probably one uh, or three uh, three exceptions, uh, where uh, three Baltic uh, states uh, claimed already in Soviet period that they uh, just um, re-established uh, their. Uh, previous uh, interwar uh, constitutions, uh, but even this example is not um, a very clear one. Uh, so in all the cases, uh, we must uh, say we have combination of the uh, three uh, constitutional uh, frameworks that are being used, um, or rather a uh, sequence of uh, uh, phases uh, where uh, different uh, frameworks were uh, used uh, either uh, consequently or parallel uh, to each uh, other. And uh, when we go through um, individual uh, cases, uh, probably I'll try to uh, identify what was the constellation of the use of constitutional frameworks in each specific uh, case. Um, uh, it's uh, uh, crucial also to take into consideration crisis patterns of regime dynamics. Uh, uh, particularly this is true of the initial, the first uh, phase of regime consolidation. Uh, why? Uh, the reason is very simple. Uh, since uh, all the 23 cases uh, emerged in the process of the crisis of uh, Soviet Union, uh, they were crisis uh, uh, overwhelmed, so to say. They were crisis ridden. And um, in uh, um, many cases, this, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the dynamics of uh, regimes uh, were um, uh, either a uh, continuation of uh, the crisis that we uh, observed, the crisis of Soviet Union, or uh, they were uh, highly influenced uh, by uh, by this crisis. So it's it it wasn't um, it wasn't uh, just a mere coincidence that uh, in uh, uh, um, practically in all the polities we have a series of uh, um, profound conflicts that led to. Um, a sequence of crises. In some cases, actually, we have either uh, full-fledged or localized civil wars uh, 
uh, that um, uh, that developed uh, that developed there. So the very sequence of those crises could also be a base for classification of uh, uh, regimes. Uh, in one uh, at one extreme, uh, we have uh, regimes where, with all the conflicts, uh, the um, um, and the, the, those conflicts remain manageable and uh, do not lead to um, uh, to major crisis. Uh, while, uh, and this is true, for example, of uh, uh, Baltic states. Uh, this is uh, um, uh, probably uh, to a lesser extent uh, true uh, of. Uh, uh, Central Asian, some Central Asian uh, states uh, were a different uh, alternative uh, pattern uh, of uh, uh, consolidation of uh, uh, agreement uh, was, uh, uh, was used and, and management of uh, public forces was used. Um, but uh, this uh, but in uh, at the other extreme, uh, we can uh, see um, a situation uh, where uh, there's an uh, ongoing uh, uh, crisis uh, in uh, um, such countries as, for example, uh, Georgia, uh, uh, all Transcaucasian republics generally, uh, Transcaucasian states, or in Ukraine. Um, uh, uh, the, the, actually, the phenomenon of uh, orange revolutions, which we'll consider later at the, at the next class, um, is uh, uh, a continuation of uh, the same uh, same uh, tradition of this other um, class of crisis development. Crisis development. Uh, what were the uh, uh, factors that uh, would allow consolidation of regimes? Of course, they would differ also quite uh, significantly. Uh, uh, and, uh, of course, the results of uh, consolidation were also uh, quite different. So both um, uh, causes and results are uh, quite uh, uh, different. And here we can use uh, the um, methodology of funnel of causality. It's uh, a fairly um, effective uh, pattern that had been uh, used by uh, my colleagues uh, here in uh, Gimo, uh, as well as uh, by our colleagues in uh, Bergen University and some uh, other places. Mm, uh, allowing to uh, make a link between causes and consequences of um, mm, uh, crucial uh, situations that uh, um, emerge uh, during the uh, consolidation processes, uh, for example, during the foundational uh, elections um, or uh, major crises, uh, confrontations, um, or even civil war situations that uh, that uh, happened in uh, individual individual cases. So, in speaking now about uh, the uh, results of consolidation of regime, uh, uh, those uh, results and the very consolidation of, of regimes um, led to uh, reconsideration of political agendas. The very political agendas upon which the regimes uh, consolidated uh, have uh, undergone uh, change during the process of consolidation. And uh, as a result of consolidation, there was development of new political agendas. And the uh, second very important aspect, uh, which uh, could be related to uh, the issues which we discussed at the initial classes of uh, our course, uh, was uh, um, the fact that after consolidating of regime, so during consolidation of regime, as one of uh, its results, um, a regime uh, could uh, more consciously and directly uh, resort to uh, uh, geopolitical 
and uh, chronopolitical, that is historical, evolutionary potential uh, of, uh, of uh, individual countries uh, to individual national traditions and so on and so forth. So after this uh, general uh, overview uh, of uh, approaches and uh, tendencies uh, within uh, the former Soviet area, uh, we probably could uh, look into individual cases of uh, state building. So in uh, Northern Eurasia, as I mentioned, uh, we have a case of uh, Russia and uh, Chechnya. Well, in Russia, we have um, uh, institutional framework of maintaining Soviet constitution as late as October of uh, 1993. Uh, it's um, uh, really uh, very interesting and very uh, uh, strange uh, fact, uh, uh, fact that um, uh, soon after the crisis of uh, 91 and dissolution of uh, Soviet Union, the uh, 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 polity that uh, tried to play the role of a leader of, uh, of the process of uh, change and transformation, actually um, resorted to uh, maintain the major framework of uh, Soviet constitution it was uh, operating upon uh, without carrying out uh, either foundational elections or uh, um, uh, accelerating and uh, developing, um, accelerating the process of uh, uh, legal um, uh, uh, legal uh, foundation of its uh, institutions and uh, um, formulating uh, constitutional provisions. Uh, it took uh, um, uh, nearly three years. Uh, it took nearly three years to uh, develop constitution, and the. Um, lagging behind in uh, this constitutional process and, and in many other aspects, uh, Russian political uh, political process and actually consolidation of regime uh, was uh, going much uh, much ahead, much quicker uh, in, in many other areas. And constitutional uh, work uh, was lagging behind. This probably was one of the reasons why uh, in October of uh, 1993, there emerged a major crisis in uh, Russia that uh, actually led to um, uh, to a situation when, uh, from October to December, Russia lived without any constitution, and uh, actually it was a personalistic rule of President uh, Yeltsin that had to uh, um, uh, to be. Uh, the um, uh, only uh, base of uh, uh, authority in the country in this uh, short period. Uh, but in December, uh, a new constitution has been uh, adopted and we have, uh, we have uh, consolidation, the initial phase, phase of consolidation regime uh, centered around this new constitution. Uh, as for Chechnya, I have already mentioned uh, the fact that um, uh, uh, Chechenian experiment uh, uh, was uh, uh, consciously aimed uh, against uh, uh, any constitutional framework, particularly Soviet constitutional framework, but even, uh, even uh, uh, development of any alternative constitutional framework uh, was done very reluctantly uh, uh, by uh, state builders in Ichkeria and uh, uh, only partially. Uh, what they actually did, they resorted to some pre-modern traditions, be they local or be they uh, uh, civilizational Islamic ones. Uh, as for Belarus, uh, Belarus fairly long uh, lived under 
Soviet constitution. Uh, actually, it was in 94 that uh, the first uh, alternative Belarusian constitution has been has been uh, adopted. Uh, all uh, all that time, uh, uh, the regime dynamics uh, were uh, also uh, mm, far ahead of uh, of, uh, of uh, constitutional work, and uh, this was uh, also one of the major uh, uh, complicating uh, factors in the process of uh, state building in uh, Belarus, uh, which can uh, explain. Uh, the uh, uneasiness and uh, difficulty of uh, uh, further developments. But uh, this new constitution, in fact, existed uh, only uh, for a very short period of time, from 94, uh, when, uh, uh, on the base of this constitution, uh, a new uh, regime of President Lukashenko uh, came into existence, uh, till 96, when uh, Lukashenko himself um, uh, made an attempt to reconsider the constitution. Uh, he organized a referendum uh, to uh, do so to get additional um, additional uh, 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 rights uh, and uh, uh, and from this from this period uh, the. Uh, from '96, uh, the whole idea of consolidation, the the the, the, the whole process of consolidation uh, of uh, regime, at least the uh, initial phase of uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, actually, we, we must say that in '96, the initial phase of consolidation of Belarusian regime uh, finished, and Belarus and Belarus uh, actually entered into a second phase. Uh, of consolidation of uh, regime, which uh, is typical of uh, um, of uh, simulation of uh, uh, constitutional uh, framework. Uh, constitution is uh, constantly uh, reshaped, reinterpreted in accordance to the will of of of, of, of the president. So, uh, Belarusian initial um, initial period um, actually. Um, uh, takes a uh, fairly uh, short period of time uh, since uh, 91 to 96, only five years, and most of that period uh, was uh, uh, marked by, uh, by predominance of uh, Soviet constitutional traditions and a very short period, a short-lived uh, new alternative constitution, uh, which actually uh, hasn't managed to make the difference, and uh, this led to a um, uh, change to a consolidation of another more uh, uh, authoritarian type of uh, uh, of regime. Uh, now, Estonian uh, Estonian case. In Estonian case, um, uh, we have, as as I mentioned already, uh, we have an attempt to uh, re-establish. Uh, pre-war constitution. Uh, this has been done already in Soviet period, so we, we must uh, uh, acknowledge that in, in, in Estonian case the uh, period of uh, ambiguity, the period of uh, Soviet legacy uh, was uh, or has been actually reduced uh, to a period of uh, a few weeks, in fact, uh, during uh, 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 during the Soviet uh, rule or within the Soviet rule, uh, only a few. Uh, it took only a few uh, weeks uh, between the elections of uh, Supreme Soviet and the election of new parliament um, and uh, reintroduction of uh, pre-war constitution. Uh, formally, it. Uh, 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 looks like uh, this is a prototypical, uh, nearly ideal case of uh, launching an, uh, a new alternative constitution and using new alternative constitution as uh, the framework for uh, regime consolidation. Uh, but uh, we have to uh, take into consideration uh, also um, a few disturbing uh, facts. Uh, 
to understand that uh, this would be only a superfluous uh, evaluation. Um, uh, first, uh, the very constitution that uh, has been um, uh, uh, re-established, um, uh, the first constitution of uh, Estonian uh, Republic, constitution of 22, um, uh, was uh, a fairly uh, primitive uh, type of uh, constitutional framework already then, in the 20s, to see nothing of, 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 of present day. Uh, so, with all the value of resorting to ancient constitution, uh, there were significant drawbacks there, uh, and uh, even more so uh, because uh, this constitution allowed fairly uh, flexible interpretation of uh, many uh, issues uh, that uh, were brought uh, to the fore uh, of political agenda uh, already in the 90s, uh, particularly the issue of uh, exclusion, political exclusion of uh, big uh, sections of population in Estonia and the issue of um, uh, uh, collective uh, um, political participation and uh, collective political uh, uh, participation in terms of national identity search. All this uh, um, uh, seriously uh, handicapped uh, the use of the pre-war uh, Estonian constitution. And this is actually true uh, also for uh, the other uh, two Baltic republics. But in Estonian case, as well as uh, also in, in, in the case of other uh, Baltic republics, we have to take into consideration that uh, the whole idea of uh, resorting to ancient constitution uh, is undermined in all those uh, three cases by an ongoing tradition uh, of rewriting constitutions. In fact, in all the Baltic republics, uh, in the pre-war period, constitutions were uh, rewritten uh, several times. In Estonia, which we take as, as a prototypical um, case, uh, or the constitution has been uh, had um, uh, undergone. Uh, there were three different constitutions, uh, besides Constitution of 22, uh, which actually Estonians resorted to. Uh, there was uh, a constitution of uh, uh, 34 uh, that has been. Um, uh, uh, imposed upon Estonia, and this is the right word, it was imposed by plebiscite, uh, organized by uh, right-wing uh, professist uh, forces. And then there was another alternative constitution uh, uh, adopted in uh, 37. Uh, so three constitutions, and uh, to say nothing of uh, different, uh, so to say, uh, reinterpretations uh, and different uh, modes of employing those uh, th those those constitutions. <coughs> uh, uh, this uh, uh, practice uh, or this tradition uh, actually made it very easy uh, for uh, political uh, uh, forces uh, in uh, uh, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania uh, to fairly liberally. Uh, not in the political sense of the word, but uh, in, in everyday sense of the word, to treat at their own will, to treat uh, constitutional provisions and interpret them uh, fa in, a very fairly, in a very flexible uh, way. Uh, same uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, practically uh, true of, um, of uh, Latvia. Uh, uh, Estonia and Latvia um, are, are also quite uh, positive cases, uh, on the other hand, uh, from the point of view of uh, um, regime dynamics uh, and uh, the, the, the um, patterns of, uh, of crisis of regime dynamics. Of course, there were crises, uh, ongoing crises uh, in both countries, but uh, uh, those crises uh, were uh, all manageable. They were reduced to uh, to traditional type of uh, 
uh, cabinet uh, change crisis. And uh, uh, this uh, allows us to say that uh, there's, uh, yeah, both in Estonia and Latvia, uh, very quickly uh, regime, uh, stable regimes were uh, consolidated uh, that um, uh, continue uh, actually till now. Uh, of course, of course, the one can uh, observe slight differences between a period of 90s and uh, the um, uh, few recent years, uh, but still uh, those differences are not uh, that uh, radical and that important as in many other cases. So in Latvian and Estonian uh, case, we actually uh, have an example of a very quick regime consolidation and very stable development of those regimes. Uh, from this point of view, uh, Lithuania is probably a case which uh, stands apart of all the three uh, Baltic republics. Um, although in terms of um, constitutional framework, there are, significant, there are significant similarities between uh, 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 Lithuania Latvia and Estonia, but from the point of view of uh, crisis dynamics, uh, there's definitely a uh, uh, quite visible difference. Uh, in uh, Lithuania, uh, we have uh, a series of uh, crisis developments and actually uh, we can say that uh, a period of uh, initial um, regime consolidation was marked by um, by uh, uh, domination in the internal politics of uh, Lithuania uh, of the figure of uh, Algirdas Brazauskas who managed to stabilize the situation being both uh, changing roles of uh, president to prime minister from prime minister to president uh, uh, and uh, making this system stable. Uh, with the disappearance of uh, uh, Brazauskas and his uh, uh, reform uh, social democratic, well, first communist, then social democratic party, um, in, in, in the, um, uh, from the uh, 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 regime dominating uh, locus uh, of uh, Lithuanian uh, policies, we can observe a series of crises that actually uh, uh, could attribute it to a fairly uh, a long period of instability uh, in Lithuania and uh, the present uh, situation there in that country uh, could be uh, interpreted as an attempt to reconsolidate the second, uh, more advanced type of, uh, of uh, regime after a series of crises, which I have mentioned. Uh, uh, coming now to Moldova, uh, we, uh, 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 we have an exceptionally interesting case. Uh, this case uh, is... Uh, um, is uh, uh, very uh, 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 contradictory one on the one hand but on the other hand uh, in this case we could see uh, tendencies uh, that are typical of uh, mm, many other uh, post-soviet cases uh, and uh, but uh, those tendencies uh, in Moldovan case uh, are expressed in a uh, very uh, vivid and visible uh, way. The uh, initial consolidation of regime uh, took um, uh, place during the 90s. Practically the whole decade is, uh, is uh, um, uh, characterized by, by this uh, uh, regime consolidation. Uh, if, we, uh, if we analyze, the, uh, if, we, if we take into consideration the uh, Moldovan uh, constitutional uh, uh, framework. Uh, we'll see that um, in Moldova, uh, uh, the uh, Soviet 
uh, constitutional tradition uh, was uh, quite important. Was quite important. Uh, I, during the previous class, I already mentioned uh, that, uh, for example, uh, Gorbachev was opposing creation of Transnistria uh, on purely legal constitutional base. And it's not uh, strange that um, uh, uh, Moldovan uh, government also also tried uh, to resort as much as possible to uh, uh, Soviet constitutional uh, tradition to claim its authority not upon all the not only upon all the territory uh, but also in terms of international recognition and um, all other aspects of a uh, state building building process so um, uh, the first alternative constitution in moldova was uh, uh, adopted only in 94 uh, that is uh, actually after the conflict with transnistria uh, was localized and uh, pacified because uh, the, by that time uh, already this uh, this conflict uh, was uh, the civil war there uh, has uh, stopped the hot phase of civil war uh, had stopped there was uh, armistice and there was international control uh, so uh, all this uh, difficult period in Moldovan's uh, development uh, went uh, under uh, the sign of Soviet constitution, and it took fairly long time till '94 uh, uh, that the new polity, the new state, was operating on the basis of uh, a constitution modified, uh, amended, but still uh, on the basis of uh, the constitution of Union Republic of Soviet Union. It was only in '94 uh, that um, uh, a new constitution of Moldova, alternative constitution of Moldova. Uh, was adopted. Certain changes were introduced in '96, and constitutional design generally continued uh, till the end of '90s. It was only only in uh, uh, the year 2000 uh, that a new constitutional design came into force, and was uh, and this th those changes uh, were linked to significant uh, regime changes, uh, changes in constellation of political forces. Uh, that's why we can say that '90s was the initial uh, phase of regime consolidation, while after the year 2000 in Moldova we have a further stage of regime consolidation. The, uh, even we can say uh, without exaggeration that after the year 2000 we have a second Republic of Moldova. Now we are coming to Transnistria. In uh, Transnistrian case is uh, is a very uh, complicated and a very contradictory one. Um, there, uh, the uh, very foundation of uh, Transnistria dates back to Soviet period. Uh, soon after declaration of um, sovereignty by Moldovan uh, uh, Union Republic. Uh, uh, the um, Transnistrian part um, also made a similar, a similar uh, uh, declaration. Um, uh, the reasons were fairly obvious. Uh, the nationalistic forces that uh, existed in Moldova and who were quite uh, vocative in, in Moldova uh, demanded or made claim that uh, Moldova should reunite with Romania. So <clears throat> uh, this uh, declaration of uh, uh, independence or sovereignty of uh, uh, Transnistrian, uh, Moldovan, uh, Soviet Socialist Republic uh, in September of uh, 1990 was aimed at uh, uh, preventing uh, integration of uh, this territory into Romania, possible integration of this territory into Romania. Of course, uh, fairly soon it became obvious that uh, this project of uh, integration of uh, Moldova into uh, Romania is a futile one, uh, uh, although some politicians may still uh, consider uh, 
uh, this uh, option it's not uh, something uh, practically achievable and this became quite evident already in mid 90s um, and it's even more uh, evident now uh, still this uh, hasn't changed the um, attitudes in uh, Transnistria uh, where uh, it's quite clear that uh, uh, other uh, political traditions uh, were, uh, were used to uh, conceptualize uh, their own sovereignty and uh, independence. And uh, particularly um, important uh, factors there are the ones which uh, I mentioned in the, in the, during the previous class. That is a conflict and difference between uh, two types of policies, nationalizing policies, which were typical of uh, so areas uh, uh, of um, major areas of uh, um, uh, Moldova, uh, areas around uh, Chisinau, the capital of, of uh, Moldova, uh, nationalizing policies, they, they, they simulated stateness of um, of, uh, of Moldova uh, was uh, fairly effectively developing during during the Soviet period, while uh, uh, the uh, area of uh, Tiraspol, Dubasari, and Pindere, uh, this Transnistrian area, uh, was an area of intensive internationalizing policies, uh, and. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, a way of linking both policies uh, policies together. Uh, there was a constant uh, recourse to utilizing uh, uh, personnel from uh, the Transnistrian uh, area to recruit elites uh, of, of 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 Moldovan uh, Moldovan state. Um, <clears throat> So as, as long as this balance uh, that has been uh, maintained during the Soviet period was, uh, inter uh, was uh, uh, it became not uh, possible to maintain uh, this balance, uh, the situation became unbalanced uh, in a sense. Uh, so the two different areas of the former uh, uh, Moldovan Socialist Republic um, uh, split it from uh, each other. One territory where uh, nationalizing policies were predominant became Republic of Moldova and another where internationalizing uh, policies were predominant became uh, Transnistrian, Transnistrian Republic. <clears throat> Gagauzia is uh, another very specific uh, case. It's an abortive case of uh, state building. Uh, 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 I must say that uh, uh, the very um, dynamics uh, of uh, this case and uh, particular um, conditions uh, for state building uh, were uh, uh, very um, difficult, uh, very uneasy. Um, uh, uh, the reason uh, for that was that uh, the uh, Gagus population uh, in the southern parts of uh, Moldova uh, were living in a number of uh, uh, isolated uh, territories and it was fairly difficult to consolidate uh, this uh, state building project uh, territorially. Uh, secondly, um, uh, even numerically, uh, Gagos population was uh, uh, fairly small uh, so that's created additional difficulties. Um, so the predominant uh, uh, issue in the agenda uh, of uh, uh, Gagos State Building Project was an issue of survival. Uh, that's why uh, to uh, survive, uh, this project had to be reduced fairly willingly on the part of its uh, active proponents uh, had to be reduced from the level of full-fledged state building projects to a project of segment state building. Uh, and now Gagauzia uh, is an uh, autonomous uh, structure uh, within Moldova. Uh, 
which is a partial uh, achievement uh, of uh, state building process. Uh, but uh, formally speaking, we have to uh, regard this case as an abortive one. Uh, now coming to Ukraine. Ukraine is a fairly contradictory uh, case uh, with uh, uh, all the uh, mm, complex uh, uh, divisions uh, uh, and uh, uh, cleavages. Uh, the word cleavage uh, probably would be a too strong word uh, for Ukraine because they, 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 those divisions that usually lay at the base of cleavages in many cases are still quite hot. Uh, according to Rakan, as, as you uh, remember, as you know, uh, cleavage has to be frozen uh, to be effectively used in, uh, in politics, in political uh, campaigning, uh, in uh, uh, coalition building and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, so um, since those conflicts, since those cleavages are not frozen and uh, are still quite hot in many, um, in many uh, <clears throat> aspects, uh, it's uh, fairly difficult to use them, but, but they are there. They are dividing the country into a number of uh, distinct regions. And uh, in this situation, uh, development of um, uh, um, uh, state project on the base of uh, a unitary model um, actually created uh, quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of problems. Now, um, speaking um, about uh, using the same pattern that we are using for uh, other cases, that is institutional uh, framework, uh, we must uh, say that uh, uh, the situation there is uh, uh, fairly similar to uh, Russian and uh, Belarusian situation. Uh, Although, um, uh, as, as far back as in October of uh, 1990, uh, the first attempts to create a constitutional process have been uh, made in Ukraine, this process was a very slow one. And, uh, uh, and um, the constitutional process, uh, it's, um, well, uh, went into a practical phase of practical work on a new alternative constitution only in ninety four. So from this point of view, I, I would say that U Ukraine was even lagging behind Russia and Belarus uh, in, 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 in this regard. Uh, in this regard. Um, uh, so, uh, in fact, President Kuchma had to do something very similar to what President Yeltsin did when in December of 94 uh, he uh, was trying to um, uh, enforce at least some of constitutional laws uh, in, the, in the country. Uh, 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 in fact, uh, his attempts uh, to do so led to a uh, constitutional uh, crisis, uh, which uh, um, uh, developed into a more profound political crisis in ninety in ninety five. Mm. Uh, only after this crisis was overcome, the alternative constitution uh, came in force in uh, ninety. Six. Uh, that means that uh, Ukraine uh, ha had to live uh, till uh, ninety six uh, with the Soviet Constitution, the Constitution of Soviet Ukrainian Republic, and uh, this was the reason why, uh, well, at least one of the reasons why uh, this uh, model of uh, unitary uh, state was imposed on Ukraine. It was directly borrowed from Soviet Soviet constitution. Uh, 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 so, 
So in, in Ukrainian case, uh, we have consolidation, the initial consolidation of uh, uh, regime as a fairly contradictory uh, and very slow, uh, uh, very uh, undecisive uh, process that continued all through uh, all through uh, 90s and um, well into the present decade. Um, actually, it was the Orange Revolution uh, that could be seen as a landmark uh, indicating uh, that uh, the uh, initial uh, consolidated Ukrainian regime uh, uh, actually had to uh, to um, give way uh, to a new one. But we are still observing in Ukraine uh, continuing crisis which uh, doesn't give us a uh, chance to speak um, about consolidation of new regime, but this is a topic of our next class. Uh, now uh, we um, have to consider uh, an abortive case of Crimea. Uh, uh, Crimea had no constitution at all till uh, 92. So that means that uh, the, the, the mm, political uh, uh, self-identification and political developments uh, in the area uh, were uh, done on non-constitutional uh, basis uh, during the uh, decisive period of the collapse of Soviet Union. It was only for three years, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, that a new constitution existed from 92 till 95 and it was in 95 uh, that uh, the uh, constitution uh, that the uh, constitution of uh, uh, Crimea um, was uh, uh, annulled by uh, the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine uh, and uh, um, for example, the post of the president of Crimea was liquidated and so on and so forth. And uh, on April 4th of 96, uh, a new constitution was put in, in effect for a period of uh, nearly uh, a year from March of uh, 95 till March of 96. There was already a period of, again, of no constitutional uh, rule in 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 Crimea only from 96 we have a consolidation of new regime but this is a consolidation not of uh, a state building process but a consolidation of segmented statehood within within uh, Ukraine Armenia Armenia is uh, a very uh, good example of uh, fairly uh, consistent efforts uh, uh, in uh, state building. Uh, of course, this consistency uh, could be attributed to a great extent to a very long and uh, rich um, uh, tradition of uh, uh, Armenian uh, polity building, which dates back to a uh, period of uh, three millennia ago. Uh, 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 but still, um, the challenges, both internal and external, made uh, this process uh, very, very complicated. Uh, 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 in fact, um, the uh, Armenian Republic uh, also lived uh, with the uh, Soviet uh, constitution. Uh, for quite a long period of time. Uh, the new constitution was adopted only in July of uh, 95. Uh, and uh, uh, what is uh, uh, more important um, and uh, more complicating aspect of um, uh, regime consolidation uh, was uh, the fact that uh, Armenia directly or indirectly was involved in Karabakh crisis on the one hand and secondly there were a series of internal uh, purely Armenian uh, crises there 
uh, for Armenia, probably this crisis dynamics is a factor uh, that is uh, particularly uh, important um, to uh, uh, establish uh, characteristics of uh, the initial uh, regime consolidation. Uh, uh, we can uh, say uh, in a very general uh, way that uh, the initial uh, period of regime consolidation is uh, very much uh, linked uh, with the activities of uh, President Ter Petrosyan. Uh, so uh, the period of his rule uh, could be seen as the initial phase of uh, uh, regime consolidation. Uh, while uh, the uh, the mm, elections of uh, mm, become of uh, be coming of um, Kocherian uh, to presidential post uh, could be seen as indication of a new mm, second phase, uh, further phase of uh, regime consolidation that we would consider at our next class. Azerbaijan is uh, um, uh, a very specific case. It's uh, a case of uh, uh, um, uh, quite uh, a contradictory, uh, contradictory uh, development. Uh, in fact, uh, 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 this is uh, this is polity. Uh, which uh, was uh, whose development was uh, determined to a great extent by crisis uh, dynamics, uh, and uh, uh, this crisis uh, dynamics uh, uh, actually uh, uh, made the uh, first half of uh, of nineties. Uh, uh, a fairly problematic uh, period of uh, its uh, of uh, its existence. Uh, uh, it wasn't only the Karabakh crisis um, uh, a factor uh, in uh, this development, but also um, internal uh, conflicts uh, coming to uh, um, uh, to presidential post of LGB, then his dismissal, uh, return of uh, Aliyev. Uh, to the uh, locus of uh, uh, of uh, uh, main authority, uh, uh, and it was only under Aliyev uh, that uh, uh, regime significantly started uh, to um, uh, consolidate, and uh, 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 and the constitution was adopted uh, at the referendum in November of uh, 95. Um, 95. Uh, in other words, uh, it happened fairly late, uh, and uh, for um, and through all this crucial period of internal and external uh, uh, crisis, Azerbaijan had to live uh, on the basis of uh, of uh, Soviet constitution, uh, with some minor additions. Uh, like uh, Constitutional uh, Act of October 91 um, and uh, some other documents uh, which uh, couldn't be um, uh, considered a proper constitution. Karabakh uh, or Artsakh as uh, they call it in, uh, in Armenian uh, is a very interesting polity. Probably this, uh, uh, this is uh, a state-building project uh, that is most success uh, successful in uh, all the post-Soviet uh, uh, period from the point of view of uh, developing viable and stable uh, state institutions. As, as for <coughs> As for crisis uh, dynamics and constitutional dynamics, uh, here we um, don't have um, anything uh, uh, very unusual. Uh, we have a series of crises uh, there, and we also have 
uh, have a gradual um, establishment of constitutional laws, fairly, fairly uh, quick and uh, resolute, taking into consideration uh, conditions of war. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, what is uh, 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 more important from the point of view of, of uh, uh, regime consolidation was uh, fairly quick uh, um, uh, change of gear, so to say, change of, uh, of regime from a war regime into peaceful regime uh, as, uh, as long as armistice uh, has been reached. Uh, in fact, in a very uh, effective, uh, orderly, uh, and uh, even we could say quasi-democratic way, uh, the old leadership of uh, uh, war period uh, has been uh, supplanted by new uh, leadership, uh, although there were personal um, uh, links between both uh, both uh, periods, still, still there's a distinct uh, borderline there and this uh, uh, borderline also shows uh, that effective uh, governability structures have been created uh, there because they allowed uh, to make this transition of power transfer of power uh, to make very effectively uh, and clearly the same is true about uh, then ongoing elections uh, in, uh, in uh, this country uh, which uh, allows uh, um, uh, Karabakh uh, to uh, uh, to look uh, uh, politically uh, uh, very effective. Uh, and I must say, I have my uh, personal experience of meeting with uh, um, people, uh, citizens there and uh, politicians there uh, in Karabakh, and they um, all claim that their major resource or one of the major resources is development of uh, democratic institutions. They want to be more democratic than either Armenia or Azerbaijan to claim international recognitions and they are working on that very uh, consistently. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, initial uh, regime could be considered a regime of, uh, of uh, war period and uh, the period uh, of consolidation of regime that uh, took place uh, after the war uh, is uh, also quite clearly uh, um, linked uh, with the activities of uh, uh, Kocherian, who used to be uh, the uh, formal and informal leader of Karabakh uh, during the 90s. Georgia. Uh, Georgia is uh, a very uh, difficult, uh, difficult case. Uh, in uh, in uh, Georgia, uh, we uh, have uh, a period uh, of uh, uh, crisis development at the very beginning of. Uh, uh, its um, its existence, and generally speaking, we can uh, say that uh, development of uh, 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 Georgian model is to a great extent uh, similar uh, to Ukrainian case. All the major uh, aspects uh, of, of of politics in in, in Georgia find their parallel uh, in Ukraine, uh, with one. Uh, uh, difference and the difference is that in the Georgian case all contradictions are to a great extent exaggerated uh, uh, to begin with um, we must say that uh, a period of uh, uh, Soviet constitutional existence uh, that was typical of Ukraine in Georgian case uh, uh, is uh, um, complicated by factual negation of Soviet constitution. There was Soviet constitution formally uh, till uh, 95, yes, till uh, July 95 when uh, under Shavarnadze 
a new constitution, alternative constitution of Georgia was uh, adopted. Uh, Georgia formally uh, lived under uh, Soviet constitution of uh, um, Union Republic of Georgia with some alternation, some, some additional constitutional acts, but which, which uh, were not proper constitutions and couldn't uh, substitute uh, this uh, constitution anyway. Uh, but in uh, practical terms, uh, all the period of, uh, um, of uh, um, uh, from all the period from um, uh, 91 uh, till uh, um, till the uh, collapse of uh, regime of Gamsakurdia uh, was characterized by uh, practical refusal uh, to consider. Uh, constitutional framework of uh, uh, Georgian Republic as any base for uh, uh, practical work and it was uh, Gamsakurdia himself and his uh, close circle that were uh, acting as a kind of a, a, a source of constitutional, so to say, authority. Uh, Abkhazia uh, quite an interesting case and uh, it uh, differs um, from other cases uh, of uh, uh, state building in unrecognized countries in, in, in segment polities uh, that were not uh, union republics uh, is that uh, um, in Abkhazia uh, uh, development of regime is uh, uh, dominated uh, by uh, 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 crisis dynamics. Um, this was true uh, of a long period of uh, Arzimba presidency, um, where several uh, successive wars uh, with uh, Georgia um, uh, could be seen. And this is also true of the uh, period that, um, that we're observing now uh, when um, Arzimba uh, resigned and there were presidential elections and uh, uh, new conflicts uh, emerged both inside and uh, uh, Abkhazia and uh, in the, its uh, relations with uh, with uh, Georgia. Um, Ajari is an abortive case. Uh, 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 this is a case of uh, personalistic rule. Uh, regime actually uh, uh, hardly uh, hardly uh, consolidated. Uh, one could say that it was uh, more or less sultanistic regime, uh, uh, and it's not uh, it's not uh, uh, an exceptional uh, situation uh, since uh, this regime emerged in, in the period of uh, uh, difficult uh, time of troubles for. Uh, uh, Georgia, uh, the period of uh, Gamsakurdia, uh, where constitutional base, uh, constitutional foundations uh, for uh, power relations uh, were uh, not uh, uh, respected. Uh, so uh, the Ajarian uh, development um, actually uh, is very much linked to uh, that tradition. Uh, we have uh, a case of, uh, uh, of, of developing of a personalistic and uh, sultanistic, probably um, it's some mixture of uh, sultanistic personalistic regime. Uh, and uh, it's not uh, strange that uh, uh, this state building process uh, um, uh, based on existence of this type of regime uh, became abortive as long as it um, uh, confronted uh, a very decisive and rigorous oppo opponent in the face of uh, Georgian leadership uh, by Saakashvili. South Ossetia. Uh, in South Ossetia, uh, mm, the uh, Soviet legal uh, tradition, uh, constitutional tradition, is uh, fairly uh, strong. Even uh, adoption of uh, uh, new constitution and uh, uh, carrying out referenda 
uh, doesn't uh, um, negate uh, this fact. Uh, in many aspects, uh, situation there is very similar to Abkhazian. Um, uh, and uh, uh, we must uh, say that uh, uh, only in recent period uh, there have been made attempts to uh, develop a more sound base for uh, uh, for uh, institution uh, building processes. Um, one of uh, the handicaps that prevented uh, an earlier development of institutional process were, uh, were uh, close links between northern and southern Ossetia and uh, illusions that probably some of uh, the politicians had uh, that there could be achieved uh, some kind of uh, um, institutional design that would uh, take into consideration the general Ossetian framework. Uh, oh. Kyrgyzstan in uh, Central Asia uh, for quite a long period of time Kyrgyzstan was considered uh, to be um, was considered as a kind of um, an attempt to uh, build um, a democratic regime but uh, 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 But I must say that um, this uh, uh, is only a very superfluous impression. Uh, in fact, uh, the type of regime uh, that uh, emerged uh, under the presidency of uh, Akaev um, was uh, also a very personalistic uh, type of uh, regime with all the simulated constitutionality and uh, democratic institutions uh, its uh, power base was uh, fairly uh, weak and uh, traditionally uh, oriented uh, so it wasn't uh, by chance uh, that uh, a period of uh, uh, seemingly uh, stable uh, existence of Kyrgyzstan have been supplanted by a period of Tulip revolution and the crisis that uh, Kyrgyzstan is uh, living through only proves uh, that um, consolidation of uh, the initial regime was fairly fairly superfluous. Tajikistan is uh, probably uh, probably a uh, prototypical uh, example of uh, civil war uh, pattern of uh, of development for a long period of time a uh, country was uh, ridden by civil war and was impossible to discuss uh, consolidation of regime in terms of either constitutional tradition uh, or anything um, or any um, meaningful um, agenda uh, for uh, transit destination. Um, uh, uh, after the end of um, a civil war, uh, we can observe a period of uh, uh, gradual uh, building of authoritarian regime uh, that uh, is uh, based um, on uh, fairly limited uh, and uh, very uncertain uh, constitutional base. Uh, uh, we can say that uh, Tajikistan, after the period of uh, civil war, is still in the initial phase of regime consolidation, which is far from being uh, complete. Uh, uh, Turkmenistan is, uh, mm, uh, seems to be uh, quite an opposite case, in the sense that the regime there was uh, consolidated fairly quickly. Actually, this consolidation uh, took uh, 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 just uh, a few a few months, uh, but uh, the regime that uh, emerged um, uh, uh, was uh, based on uh, on uh, two uh, cornerstones, so to say. 
One cornerstone was a Soviet legal uh, tradition and another one was uh, probably even more uh, profound, was uh, uh, local and uh, tribal uh, traditions uh, that way were effectively uh, used by Safur Murat Niyazov. Um, and uh, 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 this regime uh, proved to be a fairly authoritarian one uh, and uh, the uh, basis of its foundation were personalistic rule of the leader. Um, more complicated case is uh, probably Uzbekistan. In Uzbekistan, uh, we uh, also have a situation uh, where uh, uh, the initial uh, period of uh, uh, initial period um, of uh, regime consolidation was uh, marked by maintaining uh, Soviet constitutional uh, tradition. Uh, uh, but at uh, uh, a later stage, uh, we have developments which were not as radical, for example, as um, Turkmenistan, but uh, also went uh, in in the direction of uh, of consolidation of uh, uh, autocratic regime. And uh, as for Uzbekistan, the as as I uh, uh, already. Uh, indicated at our previous class, uh, there are uh, implanted conflicts that still have to be uh, resolved and come uh, to the fore of the political development. Uh, but meanwhile, uh, we can say that uh, uh, the uh, regime there is still in the process of initial consolidation uh, with a very clear vector for authoritarian consolidation. Uh, Kazakhstan is a more complicated, uh, more complicated example, although uh, in general terms uh, this uh, authoritarian vector is uh, also uh, uh, typical of uh, uh, this country, uh, but uh, we must say that uh, there, are, there are also made uh, efforts uh, to um, uh, develop more uh, sound uh, constitutional uh, base uh, for um, state building in uh, that country. Uh, particularly, this is uh, 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 true um, of uh, uh, constitutional uh, uh, work uh, done there. Uh, in fact, um, we can uh, uh, say that the period of uh, um, that uh, the initial period of consolidation of regime uh, in Kazakhstan was much quicker than in uh, other uh, countries uh, of uh, the area. It went close by the end of the 90s, and uh, at the beginning of uh, uh, this decade, um, uh, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, uh, who is definitely a dominant figure in Kazakhstan politics and uh, regime uh, very much depends on his uh, personal abilities and personal uh, rule, um, uh, launched a number of successive initiatives to uh, uh, develop uh, the further stage of regime consolidation. Uh, uh, he um, stopped uh, short of uh, outright uh, authoritarianism at the first stage and now uh, when he mm, is developing the uh, further uh, regime, and it's interesting that this regime is continuing with the same leader, but a new type of regime, new uh, second, so to say, Kazakh Republic, uh, Kazakhstan Republic we have uh, uh, there. Uh, the development of uh, uh, constitutional changes there is not yet uh, decisive. It seems that um, significant efforts are uh, uh, being made to um, consolidate uh, um, the uh, constitutional design uh, there. Uh, 
to uh, uh, slow down or stop uh, the uh, authoritarian uh, tendencies uh, at a fairly high level of development of authoritarianism uh, and uh, to try to uh, elaborate um, base uh, for doing s to developing alternative uh, power uh, structure designs um, that um, uh, would uh, allow to avoid a simple uh, opposition of democratic authoritarian uh, alternatives. So these are roughly speaking uh, the main uh, aspects of uh, um, uh, regime uh, transformations in all the 23 cases. As for uh, outcome of regime consolidation at the initial stage, we can say um, in general terms that in many cases agenda changes provoked crisis of new regimes that led to further phase of regime transformation. In some cases, uh, particularly in uh, uh, Belarus, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, changes in agenda would not lead to regime transformation. Uh, in all those countries, we still have uh, the initial stage of uh, regime consolidation. In some cases, even, it's far from being complete. Uh, even transfer of power in Azerbaijan, for example, um, and Turkmenistan uh, would only marginally influence respective regimes. Thank you.